a very, very, like, deep thinker when it comes to this stuff. But I also, like, if you were to watch the show and not think about it, like, you wouldn't notice. Like, it's just, like, it's, it's a good TV show. Mm. But if you sit there and think about, like, really, like, the underlying meanings of it, it's, like, I never would have thought about it. It's kind of one of those things, like, I never would have thought about it that way if it yeah. wasn't explained, you know? I'm the same. It almost kind of ruins right. it for TV shows for me because I watch it and I see those things and I'm like, oh, here's what they actually meant. But that's like, the thing. It's like it doesn't it doesn't ruin it. And like I was literally just about to say that I think that is also my quote unquote issue and gift at the same time because I, that's how I watch movies. That's how I watch movies. That's how I watch mm -hmm. TV shows. To where that's why I have to watch them multiple times because I have to watch it with a different lens. I have to go because you know I. It's weird though, isn't well, it? Yeah, it's, it's I did the weird same thing. because when you try to talk to people who are only watching it for their own entertainment, mm -hmm. now you realize like okay, for the past hour, thirty minutes, or two hours, we did not just watch the same thing. No. <laughs> you know, like now I've got to be like, okay, I can't sound like the nerd because I noticed yeah. this character meant to say this because it was about his life when he was a kid. You know, yeah, all this which is thing. crazy how the interpretation mm -hmm. goes. And I always thought it was because when I was in high school and stuff, I took like all advanced English classes, like lit. And so we would read like certain sentences. They could be talking about what's this character's favorite color. And the professor would be like, okay, well, what does this act like? What is he actually what saying through this? Like the symbolism, the foreshadowing. What's he trying to stuff. say with it? What's the deeper meaning? Yeah, exactly. That's what I like. And now that I read stuff or I watch movies, it kind of like ruins it. Not ruins it, but <laughs> I see it differently because I'm like, oh my gosh, like yeah. he's talking about this and it's relating, like in Supernatural, he's talking about this, it's relating to heaven and hell, but he's actually talking about like different sides of like morals that he has and stuff. And people, are, like my sister will watch it, she's like, that's. He's talking about this, and I'm like, yeah, no, 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 listen no. to it. Mm -mm. So yeah, that's so. I'm that's so pretty, glad you said. It. You yeah. actually made me like a lot more. Forget the camera. You made me a lot more relieved saying that because. So you see it too, though. Yes, that's yeah. how I see it. Isn't it weird that's how I always <laughs> watched it, though. Like I didn't, yeah. I didn't realize that that's how I've always been interpreting it. entertainment, mm -hmm. visuals, arts, photography, everything, until I would like listen to other people. So I'll be like, how did you like it? Or how did you like this? What did you think about that? And I have to like see their response. And of course, majority of responses is usually just how they liked it. And I'll be like, did you notice this? I'm like, no, I didn't even notice that. It's like, yeah. oh, people aren't even paying attention yeah. to certain things. So like, I, um, after I realized that, maybe around the age of like 16, mm -hmm. I would go to movies, and this is gonna sound super, weird it's very different mm -hmm. i would bring a notebook i'll bring a notebook to movies because the movie theater that i used to go to when i first came to florida no one would go to that theater the same thing with the theater over here like no one really goes yeah so i had the freedom to movie hop so i would just go and sit there recliner chair it's kind of before the recliners came out write certain notes first the movie goes through i'm like okay what colors were in these scenes and what was the director or writer trying to say with these colors? Why was this specific person wearing this kind of attire? Why do they all, like, there's all these different details, colors, and what do they mean? All right, watch it back. Cool. Why, when they're talking, which side of the screen is this character on? Mm -hmm. um, what is the framing? What lens are they probably using? It's like, why, why does the background looks so blurry with this lens when they back out you can see everything and so of course learning the camera it's like I already was like ahead a little bit so I'm like oh you just turn this down like f2 makes it blurry and stuff like that you see that's nice. how I got into okay. the camera so easily so I never easily. thought about it that way like with a camera from when I always saw it it was kind of more from like a literature mm. not screenwriting but like the actual script like oh, he's, like, characters saying this, moving a certain way, even, like, carrying themselves a certain mm -hmm. way because Their it character. means this, and it, re like, relates back to this event or something that's coming up or something like that. And But I've never thought to look at it, like, through yeah. the cam, like, what camera is actually being Cause, like, that's, used, though. That's, like, at first, that's how I was kind of only seeing it. Yeah. Just because I, you know, from a younger... Which makes sense for, like, a... Yeah. Yeah, like... From a video that, standpoint. From people that know how yeah. to use a camera. But people who've never touched a camera, they would, you know, that's weird to them. Like, yeah. 
are you doing that? Like, it obviously helps me with my job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so you see like, it a way. exactly. Yeah. And so that that helps me to tell the story of the work that I do better, storytelling wise and visually. And on the writing side, I don't think that I'm the best at that. Only because I know people that are so much better. So watching them yeah. and understanding exactly how you explained it. It's like, why why are they a certain way? How do yeah. they become to being so sheltered or why shy? Why is this color t-shirt? What does it mean what does it mean? this scene or whatever? I love that. I yeah. love it so much. And going to museums now, totally different perspective. Because at mm -hmm. first, I used to go to, you know, museums, look at the art. Now I see art differently because I understand I know the casual phrase, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I know that a lot of people take offense to that term, but in, the, in terms of art and creation, mm -hmm. you gotta understand a lot to understand it too. Yeah. You have to go through certain things to understand whatever you're yeah. looking at. But there are certain things, and this is kind of what we were talking about earlier with that one professor that was like, mm -hmm. photography is not a form of art. I disagree. Oh, okay, that's what I was saying. I, I, like, I disagree. I think that it 100% was. That's what the professor said, that it okay, wasn't okay, okay. a form of art. And so to me, it's kind of, I kind of lost my train of thought, but um, saying that it's not art, it's mm -hmm. like, okay, there are certain things, like even with abstract art or performance art, stuff like that, there are certain things that people are like, oh, this is art. And it's like, no, it's not. Again, kind of depends on your interpretation or like, beauty and I, the beholder, mm -hmm. but it's like, how could you consider a certain framing of a photograph, not art, but somebody like sitting in a chair in an empty room, a form of performance art, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. it's just like the interpretation <laughs> of it is kind of fascinating to me mm -hmm. to see how people see their things. Like you'll, you'll be in the exact same room seeing the exact same thing at the exact same time, but we will not I see, see it the same. Thing. Or even just like minor things are different. different. But I feel like it has to do kind of like with who that person is, almost down to like the morals and how they're brought up and stuff. Because if you don't have certain experiences, you won't see certain things. <laughs> 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 um, depends on the person. My bad. Braves are winning. <laughs> Shout out Braves. Shout out Braves. Oh, like a Lego. <laughs> like a Lego. Anyway. Depending on the person. Oh, me? Oh. 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 <laughs> We're, you're going to have to put like a blooper reel together. Anyway. <laughs> um. <laughs> Is it a blooper let, let me just. Depending on the person. <laughs> has to, I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> has to do with like. Your interpretation, because if you don't experience certain things in your life, or you don't like have certain opinions or feelings on certain things, you're not gonna specifically with art or even like movies, you're not gonna see it a certain way that other people do. Because like if you haven't struggled with mental health or depression or any of those things, you probably wouldn't see that so probably in something like Supernatural, which is totally like out of left field for it to be in there. Or something like, um, like even just looking at a piece of art, if it's like abstract art, you see it one way based off of how you were brought up, but I see it another way based off of like where I grew up, how I grew up, what school I went to, I might not see the same thing that you see just because, you know what I mean? Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Like Which I is crazy because we'll be looking at the exact same, same thing, thing and you're going to see it one way and I'm going to see it a different way. And that might be the same, might be different, but I feel like there's nothing wrong with that interpretation, which is oh no. Now I feel like it's missed a lot because people, like, if you don't see it this way, that's wrong. That's, wrong. that's mm -hmm. not necessarily no. correct because everybody sees things differently. Yeah, like it doesn't matter. Like exactly how you yeah. said it, you explained it so perfect. I don't think there's any other way. Yes. It did. <laughs> <laughs> there's no other but, like, way yeah. that you could have explained that better and. That's what I like so much about, obviously, the creative field. Yeah. Doing what we do, photo, video, graphics, just like anything yeah. digital art-wise, because you're going to see things differently, but that is also like the fun side of it. You can appreciate everyone who makes things 
or is in the same field as you because you're always going to make something completely different yeah you'll never take the same exact photo with somebody else so you got obviously gonna appreciate how and they even do it. with that i feel like with video at least what it looks like to me because i don't do video so maybe like this might not be accurate at all mm -hmm. disclaimer um <coughs> i feel like it's um everybody in video has their own specific style like how they do things whatever whereas in photo that's the same but it's more subtle of a difference mm -hmm. and a lot of it is like in editing i think but it's not so much of a competition with photo because mm. at least the way i look at it it's like a me versus me thing not a me versus oh so their photos are better than mine my photos are better than theirs like it's a my photos are better now than they were this time last year yeah. and the year before that can't wait to see how they're going to be ahead of time. But, again, like I feel like that's also up to interpretation because mm -hmm. I might see a photo of mine and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so much better than what I did last year. Mm -hmm. You might see the last year's photo and be like, this is much better than what you did this year. You but know? it's not like a comparison so kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. It's you against you. It's actually, you actually hit your own the money. I'll explain this, and this is something that I've definitely realized. And for anyone else in the comments that is either videographer, cinematographer, please let me know. Please mm -hmm. let us know. I would like to know. But from what I've seen so far, and I've fallen into it, is that competition side of seeing right. someone else's work that might be working with me to where I'm like, I guess just being young and naive, you're like, everyone thinks that theirs is better than mine, like, oh, oh. Yes. you know, and you kind of, you kind of. Especially kinda, when you work so closely together with all these creative people. Oh my goodness. And it's the line, in all honesty, before I was working at UT, mm -hmm. basketball absolute favorite because that's just what i knew mm -hmm. i grew up watching you may know them i don't know if you do like hoop diamonds ball is life ball overtime is life. Mm -hmm. it's like all these different pages that were dedicated to high school college mm -hmm. it's kind of like overall basketball and like recruitment and like all these different aau players all these big names and that was before nil became a thing but doing that um, in kind of the area that I grew up in, the DMV, Maryland, PG County, Maryland, basketball is huge yeah. there, like gigantic. It is, I wouldn't say the mecca of basketball, but a lot of the league respects the DMV just because a lot of um, talent comes from there. So growing up there, knowing the names that went from the different schools in the area that I was from, that go to different high schools, that go to the league, basketball is like the thing that a lot of people there like basketball, soccer. Um, so coming to UT, mm -hmm. volleyball, I did not like, I haven't watched volleyball, like a volleyball yeah. game, you know? So at first, I don't think I want to name call him, but the person that or had my job before that I came in needed a lot of help. He was the only person doing it. So he would usually be off doing his own thing mm -hmm. or, you know, something maybe that I would pay him more. So they were like, okay, First sports that's up, volleyball, volleyball and soccer. So at the time, the soccer team loses, you don't really need to worry about content like that, but volleyball is winning. But the issue was, it was like, at first, it doesn't seem to be like a lot of fan engagement, you need more people on social media, like what is the thing that you could record for volleyball, since the only way to get a point is, <laughs> you know, like, you know, so that was the issue. It was like, how do you make volleyball more appealing to people who aren't necessarily watching the game? Right. So it was like, okay, now everything that we talked about earlier about the detail, mm. writing, I was like, okay, I know all of this stuff. How do I apply this to now to sports? There's a lot more that goes into it than I think people realize. Think about or realize. You have no clue. Especially when the real video, the edit, whatever, is so good. Yeah, there's so much that goes into that, which is what makes it honestly like 10 times better than what it would be if you just saw it. I'm like, oh, that's a cool video. Mm -hmm. you know? And so what I'm about to say is going to sound very nerdy, but it makes sense to a lot of people mm -hmm. that are behind the camera. Sports, in its own way, is also art. There's an art form to it. There's a technique. There are, there are two different ways that you have to play your certain sports. And there's so many ways you can do it too Look for each sport there's so mm -hmm. many ways you can like so, tell that story yeah and i think that was the most fun part of it not only learning the game of volleyball 
but also one obviously he's on my handheld person i don't own a gimbal i liked being able to track movements and doing it with my hands to where people were like how did you get that shot so steady i was like i know how to hold the camera in a certain way to where it's just like completely mm -hmm. stable to where i don't have to use like stabilizer after or something like that one because i want to be in film so if i know more of the camera if i'm better with my hands than like mechanical machines right that makes me more valuable to someone else that is doing handheld on the set so if they need a cinematographer if they're kind of upset like oh this footage is too shaky like it nah, these steady hands easy like i already have that advantage right over somebody else and that takes it takes it took years i did so no, I can't things. do anything. Even pictures, I can't do anything <laughs> without, like, my, the balancing out because I, like, will take a picture like this. I'm like, oh, that's straight, and it's, no, it's mm -hmm. not. <laughs> it took years. I, I have to balance everything afterwards. Cause really? You know the little green thing that you put in the middle? <laughs> I constantly have to keep mine on. The park. Because the, yeah. <laughs> See? I don't even know what it's called. But I constantly keep it on just because, like, I do not have steady, like, I'm so shaky. Zero equilibrium whatsoever. <laughs> so I like I would not be able to do film specifically for that. I was, so that's I was definitely a, it, where it's always like the, the little, little green, green, the little green thing. The little green, the little green thing. thing. I feel you. That was me at first, but yeah. like, that's just like I enjoyed shooting that sport, and I also enjoyed knowing the players that were playing. Yeah. Because to me, and to probably any other camera person that like really appreciates the art, appreciates the craft, mm -hmm. appreciates the career field storytelling is a huge part obviously of film right so for me to know the real person that is playing the sport that i'm recording especially volleyball because that yeah. team they're amazing every year they're amazing people amazing girls yeah. love them so knowing them off the court made it so much more special actually recording them and trying to put so much more emphasis on like what song kind of you know uplifts this video what song kind of I don't know matches their their personality like what actually fits them and honestly from my standpoint i'm bringing more personality out of them learning them more helping the people that don't know who they are understand them more that is a fun part of my yeah. job i love it so like shout out to tampa vb good luck with the season oh yeah killing it so far killing no it. pun intended <laughs> 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 no pun intended no pun intended I have such a hard time doing tennis, like doing anything for tennis. I can not tell you the first thing about tennis. I don't, never watch tennis, don't play tennis or anything. The first time I ever did shoot tennis, I hated it because I didn't know <coughs> what to do, where to mm. set, like, you know, when you've never seen it before, it's difficult. No. And whereas like with something like baseball, you can, I hate using baseball as an example because it is so simple, but basically, like, if I'm watching, like, somebody, like, in the infield, whatever, I've got the camera focused on them, I can tell where the ball is going to go based off of the sound it makes off of the bat. So I don't have to watch Whoa. where the batter is. Say that one more time. Wait, really? I never Say that one more time. I don't, I don't ever watch the batter. Like, if okay. we're in the infield... I don't have to watch the batter or the pitcher mm -hmm. because I can tell where the ball is going to go based off of the sound of the bat. What? I don't know. So, yeah, because if you hear it, and it's, which kind of sounds like wow. a little crazy and stupid. And no. I said that to Zay one time, and he looked at me like I had six heads. No, but he was like, what? But I said, yeah, watch. Wow. And it was, I remember specific, it was focused, and I had it focused on um, second baseman. Mm -hmm. And I could hear where it went. And I, he t slightly turned, and you can also tell by like body movement mm -hmm. too. So I heard the sound and it came off of like the tip of the bat. So I knew it was going like mm -hmm. this way. Boom. And he <laughs> turned it so I could tell and I was like, oh, it's going. So I moved and it was right. Mm -hmm. And you could see wow. right fielder going like this. So it's, you can just kind of. I got to put the cookie down for this one. <laughs> oh no. Hey, Bob, I'm so glad you said that. Right. Because one, for any teacher to tell any student, tells you you cannot do something in whatever world or career field that you're going into that only passion is driving your ambition and that is too cutthroat in whatever field that you're going into and passion is not enough to cut it <sighs> first evaluate yourself evaluate yourself because 99 percent chance they're not correct 
They're only saying that from their position. They're not in that field that you would like to go into. They are not the recruiters of the people of the field that you would like you to get into. They are not you. So. Nine times out of ten, they also don't know you. They don't know They you don't know either. what's going on in your life. They don't know what you're doing to achieve this goal. Whether you hand them a resume or not, or they see your portfolio or anything. Mm-hmm. Still, they don't know what's going, what you're putting into it. Or capable of. Or what you're capable of, like aside from being passionate about it. So, just to kind of piggyback mm-hmm. off of what Thank you're saying. You. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, no, seriously. Anyone that's listening to this, but I was telling Ava earlier, you have a purpose, and no matter what, try to always fulfill that purpose. Because no matter what amount of money you could be making, your purpose is going to be a lot more beneficial to the people around you, to you, to the people that you're going to help more than money. So. Again, if any anybody, it doesn't have to be a teacher, it could be a coach, it could be a mentor, it could be a boss, and they don't think that you're cut out for whatever career field, job, hobby, whatever it is that you want to get into, bro, you have a purpose, and what is ever on your heart and in your gut, chase it. If you have a dream, go after it. Because, what I just found out earlier, Ava can hear, <laughs> Ava can hear, where the ball's going to go after it's hit. To me, that's astronomical. But the fact that she eat, sleeps, breathes baseball, she already has that advantage over other people who can't hear that or who don't listen for those things. That's amazing. And that is a gift that God has given her to pay attention to. There's probably people who play baseball that don't even do that or don't know that or don't have that trait. So, Avar, mm-hmm. do not let anybody tell you that you can't do something. Because most chances are you probably can. You also have to consider the source of it too. Where that advice is coming from, who it's coming from, mm-hmm. and who it's going to. Because nine times out of ten, if it's like professors, boss, mentor, it's not going to be so much of a jealousy thing. Sometimes that may be the case. <laughs> but, because you, like, I feel like you never know. But you yeah. got you to gotta just consider the source. And sometimes you do have to take it the uh, grain with a grain of salt. Because they don't know you, don't know what you're putting into it, what's going on in your life, what drives you to get there, whether it's passion, purpose, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Just that was one thing I learned through the whole situation was considering the source mm-hmm. because of not knowing what's going on mm-hmm. in my life, I guess. Yep. So. so I have two things and a follow up question. One, I remember someone who said, and there's like this page on TikTok where this guy actually follows people around in Tampa, mm-hmm. asks them business advice for other people that are entrepreneurs, whatever, who wants to listen. One guy said, don't ever take financial <laughs> advice from someone who is not making more money than you. I was like, whoa, that's like such mm-hmm. it's good, you know? But it's kind of the same thing with the field. Right. What kind of, like if someone's trying to belittle you, or maybe they don't see your potential. Maybe, like you said before, they don't know you. They don't know what you're made of. And they can only see so far into the field that you're trying to get into. They only know so much. And that's why I put the limited thinking. Yeah. They probably don't want to go into the field that you're going to. They don't know how the hiring process works. They don't know how marketing or PR or advertising or the type of things that they actually look for for photography. So listening to someone who doesn't even do that or wear the shoes that you wear wouldn't be the smartest thing. So I know it's a lot of motivation behind that, trying to like prove them wrong. But the second thing was, I have a really close friend. I won't name drop her, but she's the biggest Steelers fan who has probably ever lived. <laughs> Shout out to you, she knows who I'm talking about. Biggest Steelers fan I've ever lived. and. She's definitely going to get to her dreams, aspirations, goals, and watching her understand her gift and her knowledge of her favorite team, she has had the opportunity to work there. And just watching her go from 
not knowing if she should do it, not knowing how she could do it, not knowing if she was capable of doing it, understanding her purpose, mm-hmm. understanding her gift, realizing she always had it in her. Which takes a lot. It takes a lot. Like, I'm so proud of her. That's awesome. So proud of her. And cool. I know that one day she is going to be in every position that she's ever dreamed of. And I, I pray for all Like, I cannot wait to see her continue to reach those goals. But I know something from my perspective as a man in sports, in the world around sports, how is it for you, a woman in sports? I know that I hear a lot of controversy, you know, just talk. Mm-hmm. But of course, from my angle, it was not going to be as serious. What are some things that you have faced or heard of other women facing that are in sports that may be just like a misconception or that definitely need to be talked about? Okay. I feel like it's getting the whole thing about women in sports is getting better because mm. there are a lot of organizations like on Instagram and stuff like the Sports Girl Club and Women in Sports and there are multiple podcasts for it now. Good. So it's kind of, it is definitely getting better, but I think since it is like a male dominated field mostly, which like there's nothing wrong with that, but it is kind of even like getting back to being told that you can't do it and considering the source. It was kind of like weird from a man's perspective to hear that mm. as a woman like being told that because they don't want fangirls um but you said what was some things like i've seen Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just kind of seeing it like through social media and hearing other people talking about it i guess because i haven't really like yet faced anything major Mm -hmm. with it um but i think you do see a lot more Especially like on the creative side, it's a lot more male dominated. But also, the women who I see that are in it don't push out as much content as the men do. But when the women do, it blows up. Mm. Like it goes crazy. Um, so, I do think it is getting better. better. But it is still, like a lot of it on first glance is they'll put you into a certain category. Especially depending on what sport you're looking at mm-hmm. or what sport you're passionate about or whatever. It kind of gets put, like they put you into a category. Like a box. Yeah. Like to kind of say, even if it's based on, like before they even see your portfolio, see a photo of yours, like you kind of are already put into a certain category, I guess. I don't really know if that answers the question. I don't think they kind of label you, they pre-label yeah. you and pre destined what they already think about you before yeah. you even can show what you're capable of. Mm-hmm. That is unfortunate. And of course, me saying it as a man, as a male, you know, I might get backlash, whatever. But you don't know what you're talking about. Like, but I'm only interested because... But you're willing to see the perspective. That's what I'm saying. So it's not... And I'm not like saying complain like, oh, like, this is so much harder for girls on this or Like, not saying that no. at all. Because if you work for it, and if a man works harder than a woman to get there, Whoever works harder shows has the talent needs to get the position. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be something based off of that. It shouldn't matter. Unfortunately, it does. Mm -hmm. But I do think certain organizations, especially now, through like sport management classes and like it becoming a degree Mm -hmm. and stuff like that, is getting a lot better because it's being talked about more. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of, you're seeing like more female coaches rising. There's more female teams like they're starting to get not close to the same recognition or like watch time as the male sports do mm-hmm. but working in sports it's kind of coming through a lot more and the cool thing about it is you'll see it's a lot of like women in sports supporting mm-hmm. women in sports that's good. so it's mm-hmm. that's kind of the cool thing because it's its own little like mm-hmm. mini yeah. network inside of the big network that's kind of like promoting mm-hmm. other people through it so that's so good. That's so good. I totally cut you off. No, but they didn't. No, 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 no. They didn't at all. <laughs> Actually, I was, <laughs> did not. I was. I'm. I was heavily invested. I. I. Not even just me. I'm pretty sure more men need to understand that, as a whole. 
And it's so funny because any man that speaks up about any of those issues, either get ridiculed, called out, whatever. You know, you already know what comes with it. But my perspective of that as a whole has already been so different because the women in my personal life has helped me to get to every position right. that I've been at to where that in most cases I didn't even realize. I was like, oh, shoot, that is a struggle. Like, there's an extra wall that you guys yeah. got to break through. And I'm like, that's not fair. Like, I, I you know, like, I, I didn't realize that until I got to certain positions mm -hmm. and I'd be so confused like why is he getting treated that way or like her content is so much better than this person's and this person's getting told more getting more but she's like I don't you know like, yeah. it's hard to grasp but now it's almost like right out of the gate before you even get the position or get the interview or anything mm -hmm. across the board like collegiate professional minor like whatever right. you have to I've kind of felt prove myself before I do anything mm -hmm. Whereas with others, it's like, oh, I just walked in the door, I haven't even shot anything yet, and I'm already kind of getting this a little bit. Yeah. Instead of which, again, like if you have the talent to be there, you absolutely deserve the job. Doesn't matter what Dude, put you the work do to get there. If you put the work in, whatever. I think that whoever gets the position, it should be based on that. It shouldn't be based off of yeah. one thing or another. Put the work, so, put the hours, take yeah. the hours. <laughs> I've never heard that before. You don't know the song? No. Like me? Oh, she's late. This is just another meme. Okay, it's, it's a meme. It's a meme. It's The Rock. It's like he, he had a, a song eventually. And he, he was, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. There, okay, you go, yes. there you go. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I know. Yeah, man. It's like, it's, yeah. Like, Did you see the light bulb go off? <laughs> <laughs> I like got the it. Lamp flicker behind. No. <laughs> um, yeah, like, interesting enough. Most of the connections, if not 90% of my connections, mm -hmm. have all stemmed or started from a woman. Straight up. Like the only, the way that I ended up in the UT department was from Coach K. Coach K? She, wait. Assistant basketball coach? Coach K. Oh my gosh. She's my teacher. Mm hmm. Oh, that's cool. I didn't yeah. know that. From okay. her. She's the one who connected me yeah. to Duke. See, Pey Peyton connected me to you. So oh, exactly. Anna Claire got me in front of Tom. So. Yeah. Oh. Obviously, it's, it's all about who you know, which exactly. is crazy. Like, See? the further into I'm getting, everything is about who you know. Who you know. Like, obviously, what you have on paper is great, but who you know is... Exactly. Like, I didn't believe people when they were telling me that, oh, it's all about who it's you know. Like, you should, it's so true. It's kind of weird. True. It is so definitely true. weird. <laughs> but, like, it, it's, yeah, I've even learned that side too. Because after you figure out it's all about who you know, sometimes you can see through the people who only want to know certain people for jobs. Right. Instead of wanting to know them for them first and also using them as an asset, like a mutual asset, you know? Um, but I feel like in life as a whole, and this is just kind of going back to what we were talking about, like with deeper meanings, this is how my brain works. With stuff like that, who you are as a person and your character and your motives will always get you to where you need to be, mm. regardless whether it's That's now, smart. in the future, in the eternal future. Like, if you do make certain choices or use certain people in a certain way, it will catch up to you. Oh, for sure. And I do believe that. So if you have, like, the good intentions, like, deep down in your heart... Being able to have that person as a connection, no matter what their job is or their role or position or who they might know, mm -hmm. is kind of just like an added bonus at that point. It's not like you're friends with that person oh, yeah. because of what they can do for you. Offer, mm -hmm. which is unfortunately a lot. I feel like how it goes, but it shouldn't be. Yeah. How it goes, but yeah. yeah. So that's that. But yeah. I think I, I think I posted it today. I because like. So that I've been realizing, and across my whole entire life, because I, I, me personally, you may be able to relate. Like, I, I'm a caring, kind, thoughtful person. But, I used to get bullied for being nice. Oh, my God. <laughs> Did that set off a bomb? I had no friends in middle school. Because people, seriously, even in middle school, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I completely, and it's so sad. So sad. Mm -hmm. But truly, like, 
kind of having to learn to stick up for yourself and unfortunately to justify <coughs> why you're nice to people, mm -hmm. people think it's fake. And mm -hmm. it's, no, maybe yes. open your mind a little bit to thinking that there actually are kind of people out there. Is, is that with the mixture of watching and understanding nowadays there are people out there that can put on a mask or a face yeah. and play nice and fool someone else completely yeah. and you can see through them but the person that has no clue that they're putting on a mask yeah. or they're being manipulated such I did things. see this we, you put I saw that yeah, the, the post. I did see it yeah, I um, can't remember what I said it was like it's not a matter of um I can't remember I know what you're talking I about grab my phone. yeah I think I know the the last line was like at the yeah, at the end at when it's all said and done it's a matter of who stayed real not who wore the best mask yeah because i know that there's people that have been around me um people that i've met in general that they would play nice and because i am nice and i can't blame people for it though they either may be defensive towards me mm -hmm. to where at first i gotta remember like oh shoot this person's probably been hurt before by yeah. someone that plays nice or they you know mm -hmm. so like i gotta put them to consideration yeah but it's, it's, a huge it's thing. sadder though to see yeah. it like that's sad like that's hard to that's kind of i think we were talking about it a couple days ago with trust and like mm -hmm. kind of you can still be an acquaintance be friends with that person but it doesn't mean you have to trust them with your deepest darkest secrets or even anything that's like surface level yeah. you can still have interactions and stuff but they don't necessarily need to know like Full access. my life story mm -hmm. you know but at the same time that doesn't mean like I'm putting up a wall in front of everybody. Like, I'm still going to be who I am. But I just, obviously, with friends that you have, like, deeper connections with. All I would have to say, based off of my own experiences, is at the end of the day, and I feel like you'll be able to relate to this, maybe. At the end of the day, when you're sitting by yourself after all the events of the day are over, going over all the stuff that you went through that day, that week, whatever, knowing how you react to certain situations like down to your core like how you handle certain things you are the one that has to live with that at the end of the day mm. so how you choose to handle certain situations present yourself and the kindness and or service you put forward while doing that in the long run kind of determines where you're, where you're gonna end up what you're gonna be dealt because I do think you get what you re what you you deserve. receive what you give, but you also get what you deserve most of the time. So if you are a good person, you treat people well. Doesn't necessarily mean that you will be treated well, or that you will also encounter good people. But when you do encounter good people, hang on tight. Like that's hang always because I feel like. Genuine friends are so hard to come by, especially now where everything is digital. It's so easy for people to have a conversation over text, but then you get in front of the person you can't have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So, kind of like forming those genuine friendships and holding on to them, I feel like it's definitely a... But just being, like, being true to yourself, because at the end of the day, I'm the one that has to sit and think, I could have said this differently, I probably hurt her feelings by saying this, I probably could have handled myself better. So if you're just being your genuine, true self, it doesn't really matter how other people, I guess, perceive that as long as you're doing what, I don't know, you gotta help me. <laughs> oh, oh, you're so good. But, yeah. um, oh, I was smiling just because like, like it, it's definitely hard for a lot of people to even yeah. believe that sometimes. It's because of how many distractions and how many possibilities of, I guess, someone could treat you based off yeah. of who you actually are and you may be holding back sheltering maybe even just simply being quiet because you don't want to come off as weird different whatever it is and like i still remember before bernie mac passed away you know that is my chance no it's an estimate it's like say. think of transformers okay have you have, have you seen the first transformers uh -huh. dang it do i need to google this you're breaking out google yeah, bring it, bring it up. I know Bernie Mac. Let me look. I'm listening now. You'll know who he is. Ready? 
from his face. He'd have to. He died in 2008. I was four years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was four. <laughs> okay. What's he in? Ocean's Eleven. So he was in uh, the first Transformers. Madagascar. Transformers. Mm -hmm. 2007. Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Okay. So he had his own TV show. Anyway. And he was also a comedian. Okay. But at the time, of course, as a Christian, I'm not, I'm not going to cuss, but he said, he's like, you got to be who you are. And if anyone doesn't like you for who you are, F him. Like, he screams it. Yeah. I'm like, hey, like, I guess. Like, but I always had that in like, the back of my head, low key. And of course, traveling through a world like this, where sometimes you may, like you just said, you may not find your group of people, or you may not find other people that are maybe like-minded or nice as you are, or nice to you, but eventually you will definitely get there. And it is hard to grasp that and believe it at sometimes when it may just seem so far. Yeah. Unfortunately, but like it, it definitely comes. So it, it is really hard to meet very genuine people these days. And like you said, just stay as close as you possibly can. Yeah. Hold on till the wheels fall off. And when you were saying all of that, yeah. for me, what well, a lot of people may not know, I get loud. I like to scream and yell. I went to a. I don't think I've seen that side of you yet. Really? really? Yeah. Like, I don't think I've ever Ooh. really seen. Man, I'll tell you this. I've seen like the excitement or like when you get into things like talking about things you like. <laughs> like I've seen that, but I don't think I've. S Are you talking like angry loud? No, or? no, no. Loud is like football fan loud. Okay. Yeah, come on, let's go. Woo. Okay, I've seen yeah. like little. I think. Yes. Like so. Here. I mean, loud is I would scream my lungs off. I would scream. Mm. Period. Mm. That's just me, but that's the thing though. Me playing soccer for so long, that's like in me. Right. Not soccer, but that's just who I am. When I'm winning a game or when I'm, um, I don't know, getting something right, when I'm finally learning something and understanding something, I get hyped. Yeah. I do. So sometimes it's hard for me for when you're saying something that sounds really cool, on the money, on point. In my head, I'm still going off. I'm like, yeah, like, yeah, let's go. So I gotta sit here and be all cordial, you know. But oh, see, I'm sitting here like he's just sitting here, and I'm just that. I probably sound so stupid. No, I'm, I'm like, I'm and then I lose here. my train of thought halfway through. I'm like, wow. Like I, I actually needed to hear that yeah. because I do struggle with that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Oh, good. I'm glad. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Because I feel like there are people out there who struggle with might it. Might not like speak on it because they don't want to sound mm -hmm. like. Stupid words like I. If I sound stupid, I can kind of admit it. I'm like, all right, I, but I can also admit when I don't know okay. what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So if there is something that I'm like, it's not communicating right from here to here. It's yeah. it can be interpreted in different ways, and that's why when you find somebody who's a genuinely good person and understands your thought process, because it's all about thought process mm -hmm. and interpretation. There's my car. It took her that <laughs> long to get out of the parking lot. It took her that long to get out of the parking lot. Anyway, sorry. <laughs>